Hi. Yeah, it's very nice to be here tonight. I already saw some really interesting things and also some familiar faces from the React community in the Netherlands, so that's really good to see. Um, so let's me st let me get started. So it's a reason ML for React. So what is this about? Of course, it's about React. It's about reason, and I will show you how you can benefit from all the extra functionalities from Reason inside a React JS uh, project. So React uh, Reason uses OCaml, uh, which is really not really different from the JavaScript syntax, but it's a small difference, and we're going to deep dive into to see how that uh, works for you. So this is actually a meme from, uh, from I believe, Sue Lander saying that ReasonML is so hot right now. Uh, for every JavaScript developer, um, the possibilities are endless, and there are new features, frameworks, or uh, other st interesting stuff, packages coming to the uh, community every day. So ReasonML is not really one of those packages, but it's really an extension built with a different syntax, but allows you to really explore all the interesting stuff that JavaScript has. And for those people that are thinking it, that are thinking it might be in hype or maybe another like uh, framework that is being overhyped by the community, it is not. It is actually built by Facebook uh, along the same time they built React. And actually React was meant to be uh, built in something other than JavaScript. So that's when they came up with Reason and he kept it sort of under the hood. But now you have Messenger.com uh, like Facebook Messenger and it's almost uh, for 50% built on Reason. So I believe it's a real game changer and also Bloomberg adopted it into their ecosystem. So uh, let's look at it. So let me tell me a little bit about myself. So I'm Roy, um, next to a developer, I'm also an entrepreneur, a startup CTO, and I tweet a lot about JavaScript and everything related like the newest frameworks or packages. Uh, I started programming when I was like 16 year old and I, I wanted some extra money and my parents didn't want to uh, raise my pocket money so I got into uh, development. I checked how I could make a website, how I could sell a website to other people, and eventually created my first marketplace that was used to uh, buy and trade to use DVDs for other people. Uh, I really started learning out by myself, and then I went to university and learned even more. And then uh, JavaScript came my way, and I started all the way from jQuery to React, React Native, and even ReasonML right now. So I wrote this uh, presentation uh, for. Uh, Woohoo uses TypeScript and Flow. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, do the people that use Flow already know that it's uh, also built on top on top of OCaml, the same as Reason? Ah, okay. That's good to hear that some people at least know. Uh, yeah. So TypeScript and Flow, uh, they both do some stuff that um, that Reason also does, but a little bit different. So let me first explain what Reason is. So Reason is built on OCaml, and OCaml has been around since somewhere in the 1990s, and it's been a really, it's an ML language, uh, which means it's really functional. So JavaScript isn't perfect, and some people believe Reason is, or at least OCaml is, so people started to uh, develop Reason ML on, build of OCaml, on top of OCaml, which you can compile to, to JavaScript using BuckleScript, uh, which is made by uh, almost the same people as have made Reason, and you could use it to compile to JavaScript. Uh, natively, Reason can also compile to stuff like Assembly or maybe other uh, languages if you use the right, the right packages, like BuckleScript is for JavaScript. So Boost is really for it, it's mostly for the people that are uh, sort of irritated by the stuff that JavaScript likes due to its dynamic type system. And that's basically one of the reasons for me to say, why not, use, uh, why not just use JavaScript? JavaScript is fine, but it lacks some stuff. I use, it, I use JavaScript for almost everything, ranging from web applications to mobile applications to APIs or microservices or even machine learning uh, software. But the biggest downside remains its dynamic type system. And what will types do? Maybe some people don't really know what types are. With types, you can really define uh, the structure of the, all the data that flows into your application. So it, it will improve stuff like uh, code readability, detection of code errors. Um, it also will give you some analysis about your code. It has really cool IDA support. So the people using here that are using Video St Visual Studio uh, probably know about all the extensions for TypeScript or Flow to really, um, to really make their development experience really strong. 
And also refactoring becomes way much easier if you've got all the types and you know what data is flowing into your application. So why not TypeScript or Flow? Uh, as a lot of people are using TypeScript or Flow or maybe both, uh, they, in my opinion, they offer like a partial solution to the problem of the dynamic type system with JavaScript. Uh, TypeScript is probably the, the most popular if you compare it to Flow. Uh, more people are using it than uh, people are using Flow. Uh, but still you need stuff like imitatable JS or uh, runtime uh, packages to really get everything like pattern matching and that kind of stuff. So for me, TypeScript is still not really soundproof. And I believe reason is it's uh, almost impossible to inject, or I believe it's impossible to inject data that's malicious into your JS code base. And that is, it doesn't apply to the type system that you've said before. And with Flow, yeah, Flow is also built on top, of, on top of OCaml and it runs on top of JavaScript, so why not just use Reason in the start? Uh, so let's get, let's get started by creating a Reason React project. Uh, we'll use a package called Reason React and we will also use the Bucklescript platform to transform, uh, transform our, uh, our Reason code into JavaScript. And along this presentation I will use uh, JSX, which probably most people that are using React are using. Um, you can also use it without JSX, just as you can use JavaScript and uh, React without JSX. Uh, but for now I just stick with JSX to make it more readable and clear for everybody what's going on. So BuckleScript can be installed just by, uh, by running an npm comment. And after that uh, you can use the BSB comment to initiate your first React app. And something that's really important right here is that you also add a team called React to your application so you can really get uh, the React development experience. After that, we just uh, install the, the new project and we run it. And then something what might feel a little bit odd is that Webpack isn't integrated in the process. So you have to run Webpack in a different, in a different terminal or common prompt. And as you can see, we've got a really nice structure with, uh, inside of our new application. Uh, and the really important stuff goes on the, in the RSC in the source folder with the index.html where just as with React, uh, our source code is built and the index.re where it's a reason code and the index.bs.js that is compiled by BuckleScript. You won't need to, need to change something that's inside the index.bs.js because BuckleScript does all the hard compiling for you. So first start by uh, seeing what a reason stateless component look like. Like this is the state stateless component you probably remember from uh, all the React application you've built. Uh, so we just import React, we create a small uh, stateless uh, component and we render it using the React DOM. In reason this looks a little bit different. As you can see, uh, we still have the React DOM or somehow a different version of the React DOM where we inject some JSX uh, with a prop called React Amsterdam in this, uh, in this case. And we define our component and then all the magic happens inside uh, the make function uh, where we define our prop. So in this uh, particular situation, it is only name, uh, which we will render. And then we have a re reason react string that outputs hello name. So below you can see the, the output that this function will generate. And then, um, so here we have JSX, and we have, the, um, we have the props and the output of the props. And this sort of compiles to the React create element uh, binding that is in Reason React. So another, uh, so if we would define the strong type system uh, for, uh, for Reason, we can mostly easily do this just by changing or our prop. So our prop used to be a string called name React Amsterdam, and now we change the name is nine. Uh, what would happen? As you can see, uh, inside your terminal, you would get an error message saying like this: uh, "We would expect a string, but we got a type." And it's uh, we, yes, we got a string, but we expected the int. Uh, we got an int, but we expected a string. Sorry, a bit uh, messed up here. Okay. So as you can see, we get this error in your console, and you know immediately that you're doing something wrong. And that is really from uh, reason strongly typed system. In JavaScript you would get something like undefined variable x blah 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 or you can't read null and for this it's a real a real game changer. 
So now if we would change, send some other prop to it. So we used to send just the name uh, property, and now we're also sending visitor, which is an uh, which is an array containing just uh, the strings called visitor. Uh, inside our application, we have set the type for visitor that is uh, fairly different. Uh, so let's see what it would make up. And then again, uh, we would get an error saying like, "Hey, this is not what we expected. We expected um, our list." As we composed here, this is something something other that reason React is doing. You can create a list in a map function uh, from just an array of uh, objects, and they automatically map it for you. So we get an error because we gave the wrong information to our uh, to our function. So suppose we give the good information to our function, it would look something like this. And yes, as you can see. Um, our ID is an uh, is an integer and not a string, so we have to transform it from a uh, from an integer to a string, so we can use it with a reason React uh, string binding. And then the output will look something like this. So we have uh, we have some diffs containing uh, the number of visitors we put in in initial props, and then saying hello React Amsterdam. And next to stateless components, you also have stateful components. And stateful components, they can access the life cycles or even mutate states, that kind of stuff. So in React, it will look something like this. You have your uh, constructor defining your initial state. And then you have uh, multiple uh, life cycle changes over that. So like the component did mount, you can also put in other ones. And then ultimately, you render your function and the React DOM will take, will take care of the last bit of that. So I suppose we're going to make a stateful component in reason. Yeah, it looks a little bit different, and it's also not called as as it as the other component was called a stateless component. This one is we're call, called a reducer component. And with the reducer component, we can do uh, we can access all the life cycles that are available in React, uh, but just with all the type handling uh, we saw before. And wait a minute, we're going to try to make a reducer component uh, without defining all the defining all the route type info. So we need to define the make function, define the reducer, and also given a new state. So as you can see before, we just used our regular stateless component and tried to make a reduce component out of it. Something that happens a lot in uh, React is that people use state, uh, stateful components for stuff that could also be stateless. So Reason helps you by notifying you that you're doing something wrong and that you could also make a stateless component. And if you want to make a stateful component, you need to add the right properties to it. So we, uh, now we added the state. And in this state, we expect visitors to be a list of visitor. And visitor will have all the information of that visitor inside. So we used the name and ID before. So we're going to make that a string and an, and an integer. Uh, but if we don't do that, we also get an error like, hey, where is visitor? So we're going we're gonna to put the type visitor, which we access in our state. We're going to put it a little bit up. And then our code will look something like this. I hope you can all read it. Uh, but let's start, start at the beginning. So this is the entire code for a stateful component. So we're going to start by defining the state. So this is where you uh, give the format for the data that of everything that's inside your state. So you define if something is an integer or a string or maybe an array or a list of objects. After which, we're going to define the actions. So it's a bit comparable to Redux. You define the actions here that you can access later on. After defining the state and the actions, you're going to declare the initial state inside our make function. And the make function is the, uh, it's like the class in React. And uh, here we're going to define our initial state. Uh, we're going to give up like count is equal to the, to the length of the visitor list we have. And visitors just equal to the visitor stuff. And after that comes the most important part, and that is the reducer. So in a reducer, we're, um, we have a switch statement where we can access our actions, and our actions can update the state. And for here, it looks, uh, looks quite easy. We're just going to update the count a bit, so we would have more visitors. Uh, but if we're going to zoom in on this part, uh, as you can see, if you're something that's called self, self is the equivalent of this in, uh, in React. So you don't have to deal with all the this, that, blah, blah, blah anymore. Everything transforms to self. And as you can see, we use the self.send here to access the action. And our action will mutate the state we've declared uh, before. 
And next to just updating the state, like you can compare it to set state, we have different kinds uh, of bindings from Ruiz and React to update the state. So we just have the regular update state with uh, which mutates entire states. We also have uh, side effects. So next to just updating the state, you can also update different states or execute another function. You also have side effects uh, that don't accept self. So you see self and underscore self. Underscore self is where self is uh, neglectable. Uh, I forgot something. Ah, uh, yes. And in the end, we have uh, update with side effects. So you can update both the states and, bo and both send uh, the state. We can access through self uh, to a different side effect. So a different function or maybe a different component that you also would want to update or do something else with. And if you go to the, this is another thing that comes from the strongly typed uh, strongly typed system reason has. As you can see here, we can just use the spread function to uh, spread the state inside our mutated states. Uh, I've added something along the, the end to in increment our number of visitors and also to add a new visitor object to our, to our array. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, we, would get an, uh, we would get an error inside our comment center and our terminal. Uh, that states all the fields are already explicitly listed in this record, so you can move the spread. So as you can see, we just have two stuff, uh, two parameters in our state, and those are count and visitors. So we don't uh, need to use the state spread anymore. And this is something that's really cool that Reason does. They update you with this kind of information. So we can just remove the, the spread state and then we will be fine. And it will look something like this. And our output will look something like this. So this is generated by the, by the reason React DOM. And this probably looks uh, maybe a bit overwhelming and somebody couldn't, maybe not everybody could take along. But we can also use this inside a React application. And all the reason React bindings gets compiled and you can actually use them inside our create React application, which is something I will show you in a bit. So I assume we have installed a Create React uh, version 2 application, and we're going to use the component we just created for Reason inside of this Create React application. So first, uh, we need to add the, uh, the BS platform and Reason React to our, to our uh, Create React application. After which, we will place a BS config.json inside of uh, our root project, and this is where all the compiling settings are, are listed. So as you can see, you have the um, create React uh, JSX setting for reason in above. Uh, below you have the, the BS Puckle script dependencies for reason React. And also we have uh, set a specific folder where we're gonna uh, place all our uh, reason files that need to be compiled to uh, bas.js files. So the next step would be to, to edit package.json uh, to use buckle script. Uh, so for this, uh, this is the comment to run buckle script is a BSB uh, make world comment. And this will start a compiling process from uh, re reason, re reason, reason folders to all the stuff you need uh, in bas.js. So if we would have, uh, so assume we have our um, our component from reason again, so the let component, let make, then we need to add something below to define uh, that we want to transpile this to JavaScript. So in here you can see this just below the, the make function, we're gonna, um, let, uh, we're gonna let BuckleScript know that we need to define some JS props, and those are props that we can inherit from uh, the JavaScript application into this reason component. So now we're gonna say we're gonna accept uh, name as a string, and we're also going to accept visitors as a list of the, the object visitor. After which, we're going to make a default, uh, we're going to default export. You could also export multiple ones and then uh, import them differently. But for now, I just keep it by one default. So you see the reason React binding for rep reason for JS. We're going to put in our component. We're also going to going to send our JS props in there, and we have another make function that makes the uh, component we want to use in, ja in our JavaScript application. So we're going to send name and uh, JS props. You can see the error with the name get. Um, it's actually something that comes from the, the BS.deriving abstract. 
And this makes sure that we won't get any uh, malicious data from the JavaScript application into our, our region component. So as you can see, that's the first part where we really uh, define the type for our uh, JS props, and then we're going to export them here. So how would this look like inside of your React application? Uh, you might remember the, the, the JSS, JSX declaration we did before. So we have our, our component, it's called, uh, called intro for now. And we can just import it from our region components folder um, with the right file name. And then we can just put in some JSX to also send the props in there for we have the name React Amsterdam and also visitors, which is now empty. Uh, but you could also send in uh, some other states you derived, or maybe you have reason, you have uh, Redux running in your React application. You can also send those values uh, right to your reason component. And for this, I will try to show you the real life code. I'm not sure if this will. Ah, yes, it works for the first time. Okay, so <laughs> I hope you can all see this. So here we have our uh, React application. Uh, which is created with, um, with create React app. We have our React scripts running, and for the build process, we're gonna we're gonna start with, uh, with the make world, and then after which we start the React server. So as you can see, the only thing I added in here is uh, this part where I add uh, the command for uh, for Buckle script and the dev dependencies, which are the Buckle script platform and Reason React. After which. If you might recall, we also need to add in a BS config file uh, where we have resources, so our reason components folder, uh, which is right here. And we're going to say that the output should be uh, burkelscript.js. And we're going to use reason react for it as we, as, a, as we have a React application. Okay, so if we go inside the, the source reason components folder, you can see our reason file right here. Um, I started at the top, so we have declared uh, our types, we have declared our state, we have declared the actions to, to add and remove um, visitors to this list, uh, after which we declare a component, and it's a reducer component, so it means we're gonna, we can access all the life cycles, after which uh, we're going to start the make function, set the initial state, which is here derived from the, from the JavaScript thread, so everything we're going to send Everything we sent here, so the name and visitors, can be accessed right in here uh, with name and visitors. And children is something that's a uh, yeah, reason asks for it. I can go into the details, but it's probably not important. Uh, with the underscore, or you can just use underscore, underscore, whatever you want uh, to let the reason know that these are the children. And in a reduction, reducer, we're going to access this uh, the state. We're going to change it. So we have add and remove. Uh, we also have our list here again, and as you can see, we have uh, this button that adds a visitor, and we have this one that only detects count right now. It would be like a little bit overkill to make something that also deletes the last object from it. But as you can see, it works just inside our uh, React application uh, while it's not React. So this bottom part makes sure that we can execute it in here. Uh, it's a typo, I'm not sure why it's in there. So as you can see, we've just created a regular uh, React application with reason inside of it. So, yes. So what else does reason has to offer? So we just saw we can use it inside a React application. It also compiles naturally uh, and natively to something like assembly. And you can also, with a strong type system, you won't get any null errors, undefined errors, and it's almost impossible for uh, malicious data to go into such an application. And it's also very specific. It, it also uh, allows for, uh, for runtime pattern matching of variant types, but it's most fitting to transfer all to, to JavaScript. So if everything else fails, you can also just insert uh, raw JavaScript into Reason and it will compile, compile very well. So if you might think, why do we need a different syntax to achieve this? We have TypeScript or Flow, like I mentioned before. Uh, this is like an addition to that. You don't have to use, you don't have to use it if you want to access it most supported features. Like some of them are already in TypeScript or Flow. But if you want to do something new and maybe want to in, insert some more functional programming into your uh, into your daily life, then you could use ReasonML. 
And in terms of security, it's, it's the best you can get as its type system is 100% rock solid. And yeah, it will save you a lot of time on checks and unit tests and all that stuff to, to get to know more. So if you want to actually get to know more, then you can go to Twitter and find me there, or you can go to the, to the ReasonML website. And the code I just uh, sent to you, you can also find that code on GitHub. So you can, uh, use it, you can uh, clone this uh, repository and use this actual application at your own home and maybe make your own Reason component, which you can also insert in React Native, by the way. So uh, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions or uh, else that will be it.